Welcome back to a Punch Technology video. Today, we're gonna to be discussing the right way that you should be calling your PC. Now, make sure to stick around to the end of the video because no one really tells you this information. It's generally not available on the internet or on Google, um, but this is a standard practice for PC manufacturers, depending on what cooler you've selected for your system. If you have a standard Intel cooler in your system and you have quite a high spec CPU, you're probably gonna run into situations where your CPU is overheating. You've probably had this in the past already and your solution was probably to buy a new cooler that can handle a better CPU. Now, although that probably works, the immediate solution is not to buy a new cooler. The immediate solution is to lower the power draw of your CPU in your system. Here I have a Gigabyte motherboard which has a i9-10900K installed and as you can see, it's got a default Intel cooler on there as well. Now, the system can run perfectly fine with this, but the ideal situation would be to have a much better cooler on there. We're just going to head on to the PC and we're going to run our two trusty programs that is going to be CoreTemp and Furmark. We're going to use Furmark to run the CPU burner just here. So we're going to open the CPU burner and we're going to press start. Now if we have a look over at CoreTemp, we can see that the power draw is now at 160 watts and the temperatures are very quickly increasing up to 86, 87, 88, 89, now 90. So this is not ideal for this system uh, and it's almost getting to 100 degrees now. It's probably gonna hit 100 pretty quick. Um, and as you can see actually there, the system is throttling. So if you take a close look at the power draw, it will drop down to about 23 watts, then back up to 160. Now what this is gonna cause is a lot of instability in your system when it comes to gaming, performance, video editing. Uh, in games especially, you'll notice that the game lags all of a sudden, it, the, the, you lose a sudden amount of FPS, and that's because your CPU is throttling. It's actually better to run the system at a power which it can keep up with at all times, depending on the performance of our cooler. We're just gonna stop this CPU burner and we're going to head into our BIOS and we're going to set up our TDP limits. So we're in our BIOS and what I'm gonna look for is pressing F2 on my keyboard so that I get into advanced mode as you can see at the top here. I'm gonna make sure that I'm on the tweaker menu just up here and then I'm going to select advanced CPU settings and I'm gonna head into there. I'm then gonna scroll down until I find turbo power limits just near the bottom here. I'm gonna double click on this and select enable to turn this on. Once we have the turbo power limits enabled, we are going to look for limit one and power limit two. So those are gonna be these two that I'm highlighting here. I'm gonna change power limit one to 90 and power limit two to 90. Now, you might be asking, how do I know what value to set this to? If you look at the specifications for your cooler, you'll be able to find a wattage capacity, and that will indicate what amount you can set this to. So I'm simply gonna set this to 90, I'm going to press F10, and I'm gonna press yes to save and exit. So I have my two trusty softwares open again. Uh, what I'm gonna do is just run CPU burner over here on Furmark. And if we take a look over at CoreTemp, you can see that the CPU is now limited to 90 watts. You can see it's not going over that 90 watt limit. If we have a look down at the temperatures, we can see it's running at a much more acceptable 67, 68 degrees. This might go up to around 75, 76 degrees, but that is a much more acceptable value than the 95 degrees we were getting before. Despite the power draw being only 90 watts instead of the 160 that we were able to draw earlier, this is gonna provide much more stability on your system as you're able to consistently run at 90 watts and it's not gonna interrupt your workflow when the PC suddenly drops down to 20 or 30 like we saw before. Before you leave the video, although the ideal premise is to set your TDP limit at the capacity of your CPU cooler, what you can do is go back into the settings and slowly increase your TDP limit 
until you find a nice balance where you're able to keep the CPU at a nice temperature, uh, but also not causing it to thermal throttle. So that is gonna cover the main point of this video. If it's helped you out, make sure to leave a like and subscribe down below, and I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.